Hey everyone, we are back with the second match today. I'm TH Pine and with me is Billboard. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm I'm fine. I hope you are too. I'm uh, excited for today's match. Uh, two, I would say newer teams, or at least teams I'm not yes. super familiar with. So um, I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah, Core Dynamics was a status quo. Um, they both won their first match last week. So this is just, they both showed their potential already. So um, could be, could get it really interesting, I think. Okay, match has started. So we're going to go into that. Um, do we want to go over the team, sweetie, quick? Um, yeah, so uh, like I said, I'm not so I'm not super familiar with core dynamics personally, mm -hmm. um, but we have scrimmed uh, status quo a bit as as fluff. Mm -hmm. um, so I, from what my knowledge is, um, status quo has some strong players. I think one of their highlight players definitely is fishy. Um, he's yeah. probably the most. Um, I think he's their biggest fragger as far as, far as I'm aware. Also um, one of the most experienced players, I think. Fishy's been in the alpha for a while. Oh yeah. Um, so I would say if there's a player to look out on status quo side, it'd probably be for Fishy. Uh, as for core dynamics, like I said, I'm not fully familiar with them, but um, based on their match from last week, uh, I, I honestly do think they could be a strong contender against status quo. Um, so I'm curious to see what type of attack plans they're going to unfold uh, unfold with mm -hmm. and how, a stat or how status quo will react. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because Core Dynamics is on the attack first on this factory map. Oh, we, we had this earlier. Full Echo. Uh, which one was that? Oh, the one with the East with the double office. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what are your thoughts on this map? So this map, um, I think one of the key components to hold here is office. And um, I would really do like I I'm glad that status quo is noting that and it looks like they're looking to place Barb inside of office because the office is a big contention point as there's a window facing toxic to help control power and as well as a window that can help face the bomb into no man's land so mm -hmm. east office i think is one of the big contention points here so barbed wire is going to be important and we notice they're for looking sure. to put down barbed wire for toxic as well um yeah it seems which, like they want to use three like which yeah lot. you can notice um with toxic you actually get a really long angle and you can even see the fan you can see the feet mm -hmm. of the attackers on the fan from um, even all, almost all the way back to West Office. So there's a lot of long, there's there are some long sight lines on this map, but uh, I think if the attackers can take um, office control, they'll be looking uh, to be in a really strong position. But yeah, it, it seems like they want like, to do a split push. Yeah, they would, it seems like they want to go for docks, which is a lot mm -hmm. riskier of a take, especially with um, the dock that they want to open up. They want to open up dock one. And I'm not sure if any smokes are planned to come out, but uh, let's see what kind of unfolds here. We have two. Well, for a moment we had three defenders in the in the truck on dock. Now it's only Jake. But still, we have we have a defender hiding in the truck on dock. So that's interesting. Guraj is the only one uh, defending the west office, where three people probably. Well, actually, I think they, it seems like they 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 changed up plans and have two people on dock and three on storage. Um, I Spy and Magic and Breeze are kicking in, uh, going to storage. Two flashbangs out, not really doing anything. And now I Spy is trying to push through the barbed wire while Doc is blown up. Um, uh, they're not getting into office quite yet. Oh, the, the attackers are going down. LP is going down on Doc. But um, Red Elixir could push through um, and get a kill on Gura J. On the other side, um, I Spy got killed. And so did Hantai Investigator um, on the northern part. So it's a magic versus two people in East Office right now. He still has a, has a flashbang, doesn't use it yet. Combs and Fishy are waiting for him. Combs falls back actually while, while Breeze is rotating around. Jake kind of in a sandwich position, getting shot from the long end from, from behind. And it uh, seems like Fishy Fanny might be. No, he's waiting with the mob. Oh, but Jack got the kill. Jack got the kill on Red Alex here in Western Office now taking control there. Now it's down to Magic who gets one kill on Combs though. Fishy gets the revenge kill on Magic here and takes the first round for status quo. Whoa. That was Strong a surprisingly defense. surprisingly close round because uh, yeah. I think one of the first things to note that we saw there when docks got opened up we had a great molly get thrown out and mm -hmm. used a lot of damage on those attackers and ended up leading to Alpi's death but um slaw or one of, a red elixir was actually able to get into east office and provide some disruption um but not enough to to throw off status quo as they were able to recover even with an early pick on uh toxic I think that was uh investigator who went down over there yeah um yeah. so there were kills kind of spread out all around but i think um status quo even though they stacked all their barbed wire for a toxic and green take they were able to adjust uh perfectly yeah it worked out really well for them 
So they now had. Oh, it seems like they have a crash right now again. They had a crash at the start of the match. Uh, Fishy is out, so let's hope he's coming back. Um, we'll see. The match is going on for now, so we'll just assume Fishy is coming back. Um, so we're on Prometheus Donut. <laughs> Those map names. Um, which is a sea storm map. What do you think about this one? So, this sea store, um, it's a bit interesting because so we have. Yeah, it is. It is pretty big. There are some like uh, surprisingly long sight lines, although we do have some of the fridges that kind of cut off some of those. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, and, and if you notice too, we have a there's a freezer uh, rotate right next to where the bomb diffuse is. So oh, I would yeah. not. Be, I would not uh, doubt that or uh, status quo put a player in freezer to deny mm -hmm. bomb that way. And they can I mean, freezer seems to be cellar. a very central room on this map anyway, having four entries basically in every direction. Yeah, freezer control is definitely going to be big here, not only because it kind of, uh, yeah, it controls where uh, a rotate into power and where a red door is, as well mm -hmm. as um, the core access to storefront and being able to see the bomb. Um, so I'm curious to see the barb placement from the defense here and kind of positioning. Yeah, Fishy is back. Seems like they have bath wire in the bathroom door and the tech oh, power. Okay, it's back on. Um, I like this big arcade uh, room that's shaped like a Tetris tile, so <laughs> oh, um, yeah. that looks <laughs> interesting. Uh, seems like the attackers are all slow walking towards the eco round, um, pushing storage. Yeah, and I mean, they lost the clacker like first coming. round, so that might be a good choice. You have Investigator with the, with the auto shotgun in Freezer, together with Fishy Fanny. Both of the turners are setting up south, basically. Nobody's contesting office or storage. Um, they're pushing in now. The bathroom is actually completely empty as well. They're all in storefront and arcade, basically. I guess, and a uh, freezer. And they're pushing into freezer now, where Investigator is. Combs is waiting behind the door as well. He's they're still waiting. I think Investigator is looking the wrong way, maybe. Combs going down. Um, but Investigator coming around the corner, getting the double kill here. Triple kill! Triple kill for Investigator with the auto shotgun. Oh, quadra kill! It's Ice Boy took power, but Investigator just deleted them and doesn't turn on power back on, interestingly enough. But that was... Ooh, he was just waiting there. Now he takes power back on. That, oh, I don't think Alpi can take this one back. He has a shot, uh, shotgun, though. Takes the first one and sells two flashbangs. So we might see a big clutch play. He still has a minute. Um, but yeah, they're waiting for him now. Investigator with the auto shotgun. If he has to, yeah, he has to kick that door and it's in the middle of the barbed wire. He's, I don't think he's going anywhere. Um, yeah, he decides that's not a good, not a route he wants to take. We're heading back north. I would be surprised if he can clutch this now. He's also running out of time if he's continuing. He like does that. have the attacker shotgun. It is very possible True. if if uh, status quo does, gives him the wrong angles. If they challenge him mm. incorrectly here, he can easily win this round. He does also I mean, have yeah. two flashbangs. This is honestly very very doable. It's doable, but he's running out of time now because he slow walked across the whole map. Um, this is the shot on Fishy. Fishy trying to shoot back with the auto shot, uh, attacker shotgun as well, but they're both missing. Alpi gets the shot. The hentai investigator is running in. Missed him, though. No, bo no both defenders in freezer. Gura pulling back uh, into storefront, and investigator is trying to get Alpi. Alpi, no! Alpi goes down to Gura, and uh, that's 2-0 uh, oh, for um, uh, status quo here. Interesting round. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that quadra kill. That, that is the definition of check your corners. <laughs> oh, you yeah, noticed, for sure. Four players piled into freezer. I don't. I, I may have missed it, but I don't think a single flash came through. Um, no, I don't think so. And they refused to check behind the sandbags. Uh, investigator played incredibly smart by by uh, tucking his player model behind the sandbags and waiting until they pushed through and and probably got a call from uh, the other defenders sitting in an arcade that they're starting to press through. And he just got up, turned around, and got a free four four K. Yeah, I, I, I I'm. I'm not sure he realized they were there, though. I think they slow walked, and he was looking the wrong direction the whole time, if I'm not mistaken. And no. then he as, got the call, probably. Was he not? Fellow, okay. As a fellow rat, there's no way that guy did not know that they okay. were there. He probably, he probably heard him stomping around, and um, at least right now, with the, with the way it is, if you, like, point yourself down, like, uh, mm -hmm. on, like, anything that is, like, crou like almost, like, crouchable that you can hold a head glitch, you will, your player model is, like, pretty much near invisible. Mm, like okay. you get talked a lot so if they don't if yeah if they check that corner they would have seen him but i'm pretty sure he was just uh talking there and just waiting for people to pass by you because... probably know better than me so yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i mean yeah the big thing there is just 
not checking that corner. And it's kind of sad too, because if you notice, they they flashed well in the other rooms. They yeah. flashed well into into the green entrance and into office. Perfect flashes, but um, taking Freezer there was a big mistake. Yep, yep. Didn't go well for them at all. He got the triple kill there and then rushed into arcade and got the quad, the, the fourth kill as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, did well. It did go pretty well for status quo so far. So, yeah, but I mean, um, quad dynamics still have um, a clacker and I think two charges left. So they still have all cards in hand for this round, um, which is uh, a, kill, a daylight, daylight kill house map with the breezeway. We didn't have one of those yet today. Wow, this map is... Kind of miserable. <laughs> if you notice, <laughs> okay. uh, like, well, kitchen is oh, pretty pretty exposed. I mean, so the defenders. Isn't that a map we played last week as well? Is uh, that, is that an I, don't, old map? I don't believe so. But I mean, the problem with this map is if you look, uh, four rooms are have windows to them. The only room with no windows is the bomb. Oh room. yeah, so, true. Oh, honestly, yeah. attackers here can abuse a lot of these windows and cut mm -hmm. off a lot of rotates. But yeah, it does sure. look like, honestly, that the defenders are going to read this take. Um, the attack seems to be wanting to do a door charge into kill box and wall charge into sight. Magic taking some damage there from comms. Pretty low already through the window. Um, yeah, the door charge did go off, but they're cut off because of the mol Molotov. RP and Breeze are pushing through reception. Comms gets uh, finished off here, the, the kill on Magic. Um, so attacker down one already. This is not looking good for um, core dynamics at all. I think they threw a f yeah, frag a grenade in and taking out comms. Oh, team kill by Breeze here. I'll be stepped in front of him, and uh, he's he's not on his own. Oh, being being fracked? What? Oh wow, that's two frag kills in one round, and now oh, ice by going down as well. That's a third round for status quo. Ooh, that was wow. weird. <laughs> I mean, Status Quo put that pretty much perfectly in terms of their positioning. They knew they really yeah. can't play what in Kitchen because of uh, the breezeway and the window from Courtyard. And mm -hmm. obviously, Reception is just a trap itself as well. Um, and I, I think they did place, end up putting a barbed wire for Reception. Uh, I think positioning went well there, but also uh, the attackers kind of had some uh, poor utility usage. We, had, we did have a, a nade come out. It did some mm -hmm. damage, um, but I don't think... It was enough. It only got one kill, and they didn't really yeah, capitalize one kill, off of it yeah. afterward. I mean, they got comms with it, which is good, but it seems like the defenders had a stolen frag grenade from last round as well. Yeah, um, it was, uh, so... it was cool to see. And the unfortunate TK as well. Yeah, that was that was yeah. They they both um, attack basically or try to get into get a shot in the same door, and I think they just he st just stepped in front of him. So that was very unfortunate for the attackers there. Um, speaking of attackers, status quo now on the attack, and um, core dynamics have to step up their game if they want, don't want to go out 5-0 here. So, we're back to foul echo. Yeah, let's see if we'll um, see. let's see if the attack uh, status quo decides to do kind of a, I would say even a more like standard push because I do really think uh, a, t a power play on toxic and, and green door is the mm -hmm. most obvious thing to do on this mm -hmm. uh, on this map. A uh, dox play is very dangerous just because of all the angles you have to worry about. But, yeah, um, we saw that three rounds ago, right? Yeah, it does look they, they like need... Status Quo wants to do a dox play, but I, I and it looks like they do actually have a plan to use some smokes here, which will be smart. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah, that would it, help. It, if you do a dox play, you kind of need smokes to help cut off a lot of those uh, problematic angles. Um, and I'm cu and I'm curious if the defense is going to be ready for that, considering they did a very similar uh, take. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that that's basically... Well, they, they did split between storage and dock, and it seems like status quo wants to go five people dock. I mean, that's at least according to the lines. They don't have any other lines, so... Yeah, we'll without, they're, without wear, they're worried or... about the east office window, so... Hmm, we'll see. Yeah, we have basically all defenders in, in, in an office, so we have... <laughs> Well, two in West Office and three in East Office. Um, so they're all office workers today, apparently. Uh, they did not bring the mob. Um, we have an Ingmar on Red Alex here, but all the others are with KRs or Legros. Actually, I Spy has a shotgun here, uh, holding the close corner in the in the East Office. The attackers are slow walking towards Dog. They don't want to be hurt, for sure. <clears throat> they, yeah, they brought two Black Tars, two APs, and a shotgun, and they're slowly crawling towards the Dog. Number one, and uh, nobody like the Ace office is not really watching Doc, so it, the only one really getting an angle here is Alpi. So far, I mean the others can rotate, but so far they might be able 
to get in there fairly easy. I'll be trying to get some shots. Gets the kill on Gura. Um, but Smoke is out. Now they can push in. Seems like Fishy wants to distract them, picking up the, the door. Oh, long range kill! Double, actually, two defenders, uh, two more attackers down. This is not looking good for Cotton Names at all. Jake and Combs both going down. Uh, no investigator trying to push his office, going down to Magic as well, who's sitting in the west office and shooting a long range through the window. And now it's all down to Fishy Fanny, who was uh, a few seconds ago still at storage because. He kicked that door as a distraction, and now he's up against five defenders, all of them at a full HP. I don't see him taking this, um, but we will see. Maybe he can take some some of the defenders with him. Um, so he still has two flashbangs. They're not really watching that angle. Uh, Magic is. Ooh, Fishy pulled him back out, took some damage there, and now they're aware where he is, so they can rotate. I'll be pre-firing the, the dog store there. Uh, Red Elixir from the other side, Fishy kind of sandwiched here or in crossfire. It's been taken out by Magic. That's a that's a triple kill by Magic. Whew. Yeah, great job from the defense. Um, honestly, I think the big fault here is uh, if we notice they intended to put their smoke um, around the fourth dock area, but the smoke. Yeah. I, I think I think it missed, and they put it right into their entrance. And yeah, the problem with sm or the way you want to use smokes is you want to use them to cut off sight lines and not have to be able to run through them because as soon as mm -hmm. you make it something where it's you're running through then a defender all they have to do is watch that cloud of smoke and it's a and it's it's an easy angle for them to hold because you know when you come out of the smoke you have to check all these certain angles to like look for it where a, a defender might be all well, the defense all they have to do is just stare at that smoke cloud and wait for someone to come out and that's exactly what happened we saw comms try to go up the stairs and get stuck in the barbed wire and get shot from um the the office uh, from across yeah. the map and everyone else just kind of dissolved the same way people people tried to push through that smoke rather than uh slow it down and like what let the smoke just fade and try to kind of reassess the situation yeah for sure um that didn't work out at all that smoke probably was a mistake as you pointed out and that pretty much cost them their own i think so that was a little unfortunate for status quo here but i mean good for core dynamics they took their first round um let's see if they can capitalize on it um, we're back on the on the big big sea store map here from Ethereum Donut. Um, we'll see if uh, we will get a sh auto shotgun hiding in freezer again. Um, and yeah, well, seems like the attackers want to go through storage, but they're they're aware of that oh, angle. Yeah, they, they, know. <laughs> they don't they're want like, to check the corner. Dude, make sure you check this, please. <laughs> I beg. <laughs> we're not trying oh, to get yeah. auto shotty forked. Yeah, that would be that would be helpful for sure. But yeah, I mean, I think C Store is definitely the best um, tile set to be doing an eco, and it looks like an eco is coming from mm -hmm. the the attack based on lines. Actually, we want have to frag the freezer, so yeah, they're really I mean, scared of that angle. I mean, it's not worth a risk to to even even with a, a flash there, he can easily rotate. Mm -hmm. So I think they want to guarantee this guy's death. Uh, so yeah. yeah, a frag will do it. That's true. That's true. Very much so. Um, seems like. The defenders are not setting up in freezer so far though. We have two in arcade uh, and the rest of them western part of the map in the western part of the map. Um, seems like Breeze stole a clacker. We'll see if he can capitalize on that. He will probably uh, they're not gonna bring a door charge, so no, he will not. I spy is holding um, power with the auto shotgun. Fishy Fanny is going the other way, interestingly enough. I'm not sure why. It doesn't seem like they want to take Teller, so I'm not sure what Fishy Fanny is going. Um, but the others are pushing into storage now with three pill. I don't know, comms is going... What are they doing? I'm not sure. They're just going really long ways. Now they're splitting into freeze and office. Freeze and office. Multiple is going out. They have to pull back. Frag freezer successfully. Um, but they're still kind of split up here. Red X is trying to get a pick here. Does not succeed at it. But they cannot read. They don't manage really to push in. Um, the red door got opened in arcade, I think? Not quite sure what happened there. Um, now they're in freezer, four people in freezer, and Priest is trying to take advantage of that. There's a Molotov in freezer as well. It took some damage. They're now all, all crowded in the freezer and storage here. Cannot really advance from there. Magic gets the first kill on, comes here through from office, gets another kill on Garage here, and oh, there's the auto shotgun from Ice by double killing in freezer. What a strong defense here. Uh, status quo cannot um, capitalize on that push at all, Just fail to advance and are completely taken out in storage and freezer, except for Fishy, who ran out again. Super low HP, trying to get a pick. I don't think he's trying to win the round, really. No, he's, he's shaking his head. Uh, I think he gave up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, My, what went I, wrong here? Well, honestly, what we, if, what we noticed is 
Uh, oddly enough, the defense actually gave up Freezer, and they uh, mm -hmm. gave full control of Freezer to the attack. And we saw that by, um, I believe it was uh, Investigator running in at, uh, into Freezer almost instantly with no contention alone. And yeah. then we had... Um, but the, the, the big problem ended up being that um, they got all this advancement into storage. And also, early in the round, we did see some players kind of running around outside, and we didn't exactly know what was happening. Um, yeah. So they we ended up having, what, three players push into storage with no other support. Oh, Fishy goes down, unfortunately. Yeah, Fishy um, got magic, but then was taken up by Alfie, so... But the, bi the big problem, too, is if we noticed, I think it was about three, maybe four players were stacked inside of Freezer, and we saw two, maybe three flashbangs come out, and all of them missed. None of them actually connected mm -hmm. into Arcade. So then the attack was kind of stuck, not knowing what to do, with no utility left and nowhere to push. They used their, they used their frag grenade, they used their flashes, um, and then the, by that point, the defense had already rotated to stack the two doorways they had to really watch, which was the, yeah. um, the freezer door into Arcade and the uh, office. Because uh, early on, the office was actually held alone with no barbed wire by one player. And yeah, um, yeah I mean, the attack just failed to capitalize on, on any of... Um, the defense's positioning. So did you did you notice what happened to the arcade door? Was that open or were they just trying to wall bank through it? Um, I'm not sure. It looks okay. like it looked like the door it looked like they just missed flashes because um yeah, some flashes went out. Uh there was it looked like there was some like wall banging or like pre firing from the defense mm -hmm. as well on the on that arcade door. Um But yeah, it was a little bit of a confusing round. I think um status quo was just a, maybe a bit nervous or just a bit panicky there and didn't kind of just kind of uh, yeah. I don't know, choked up yeah it's, yeah it's probably what happened like especially with uh, fishy and i think Holmes running around at the start and while the other three were pushing in already and they like, basically split up themselves completely there and um then yeah as you said they missed all the flashbangs could not really advance from there but we'll see maybe they can do better this time um seems like they want to go for eco again though on maybe well, and actually, I think they want to go through kill box. Yeah, so I think they still have a door charge and a wall charge left though. So maybe they find a good wall charge spot as well. Yeah, this is a this is a tough map to really use any charges on. Um, True. The only considering the only red door is courtyard, and uh, mm -hmm. honestly, there's not a lot of wall charges that are very good here. Maybe like the one north of office wouldn't be bad to help or to make the um, office players have to worry about an entirely another angle. But yeah, otherwise... and also you can use it just to take out about wire, so... Yeah. But, and, yeah. Oh, uh, oh I'm, I'm wincing at the poor barb placement from Core Dynamics on the red door. Um, that, if that, oh. if that charge gets blown up, which it looks like, um, they, yeah, it looks like SQ is bringing the door charge. Um, if they, if they see that barb, that barb's gonna mean nothing. But this other barb yeah. placement's not too bad. We have one, uh, mm. watching for the reception push. Which is actually going to read exactly into what um, Sesquo is doing, and we have another one uh, just for killbox. Yeah, I think Jake wants to put that uh, door of charge on the green door. Actually, the door is open now, so it might not work out. Um, but they just wanted to use it to take out the barbed wire. They're smoking into office. Uh, Ice Spy is caught by his own Molotov there, or maybe his teammates. I'm not sure. The frag grenade going off. They're pushing in, taking out Breeze here. Guraje with the shotgun rushing in. Ice Spy is going down to investigate as well. Breeze got comps before he died, though. Uh, but that's still two attackers in office. IP still sitting in smoke, getting taken out. Now Magic is there. Oh, gets the kill on investigator who was on bomb. I know Fishy. He's basically, oh my, he's not a good item. It's 2v2 in this room. Fishy taking, no, wait, what about that? That was a team kill. Oh no, Guraj, Guraj and Fishy taking the room while Jake uh, was like circling around kill box. That was a team kill by Magic. He got investigated, but took out Red Elixir in the process. So that was uh, unfortunate. 4-2 for, um, uh, for status quo here. Yeah, so one so match point. Uh, that round was, and it was kind of messy, but I, I honestly liked a little bit what status quo did, what they ended up mm -hmm. doing. If you notice, they they tossed two smokes into office and mm -hmm. they pushed uh, or, or their shotgun player kind of played entry to kind of, um, you know, because of those smokes, smokes, uh, when you sit in a smoke, you only get very limited field of view or like of what you can see. So cutting mm -hmm. off a lot of that vision, uh, having a shotgun player roll in where it's perfect for close quarters and all sure. that disruption in that smoke, I think was perfect. He ended up getting in, getting a kill uh, to start it off and then just, I think the smoke kind of panicked the defenders. They didn't, they couldn't have any angles they could hold from outside of the bomb site, but let alone yeah. inside the bomb site. And so they were kind of stuck to having to deal with like a, a burst of attackers. We saw a, almost all the attackers pile in, while um, some, I think Fishy started to hit a flank. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it worked quite well for sure. Um, it was. It looked a little messy, but it seems like yeah, as you said, they they just um, confused the defenders in office by just throwing a lot of stuff in there. I think there was a, was a flashbang as well and a frag grenade. Uh, so um, there was just a lot of utility in that room. Also, Mol Molotov that actually did not work out for the defenders. It was uh, quite opposite. Um, so it was a little unfortunate, um, but that means we are on game point for status quo here. If they win, if they take any more rounds, then they take the first game. Um, so um, Core Dynamics cannot make any more mistakes here, and they're on the attack again. And it seems like they want to go through the fan this time. So uh, that's new. Um, but the split push through storage, I think. We'll see how it, if that works out for them. I'm curious if you're going to choose to use a charge here, because um, one thing to note about Fan now, just with the most recent uh, update, is Fan is de now, destruction has been added in, or back back yeah. in mostly, so Fan is destructible now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can shoot the Fan from the inside again. So if, if your teammates are on the inside, they can let you in, which is, um, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. So they might save on the charge. That's, yeah, we will see. I mean, it's fairly easy to shoot it from storage, I assume. Yeah, I, I, exactly, because, I mean, if you kind of look at how storage is, there's not mm -hmm. a lot of places for defenders to even hold in there. The the closest thing they're going to have is maybe some angles from Toxic where they can sit under the fan and put some pressure there, but otherwise, uh, storage is pretty easy to clear for an attacker, and so yeah. shooting the fan is, it, it shouldn't be a problem, but um, it's all really going to I mean, be on Core Dynamics teamwork. Uh, even if you have someone in the office door trying to hold down uh, to hold the green door, the attackers can have someone on the window and you're in a crossfire again. So yeah, exactly. holding storage seems really, really hard. Um, seems like the defenders are not trying to do that anyway. Uh, Core Dynamics yeah, sets up for the split push. We have um, three defenders playing around east office and two on the west. Um, so yeah, again, <clears throat> Core Dynamics with a slow walk here. They don't want to give away their position at all. I think they want to throw a flashbang or something into office through the window. Seems that's what the drawing suggests. They're kicking the door, flashing into storage, moving in at the same time. Um, the others are now getting up to fan. Yeah, Spy is Ice Spy is setting up a uh, flashbang through the office window, shooting down the glass. Magic's get no a smoke actually. Okay. Um, I think he missed it though, unfortunate. The fan is blown, they flash into office, smoke off Toxic, and pushing in. Um, the defense cannot really take a pick so far. Magic against Ice Spy don't really get in further either, but I think this power is, yeah, this power is going down. Attackers took the power, so this is looking good for them for now. I assume they have NVGs. Um, Jake's still sitting in this office, so they are together with Investigator. And um, the, the defenders are trying to hold a long line. Get the kill here. Fishy gets the kill with the mob on IP. And Magic is being taken up by Investigator. But Alexi is trying to shoot back against comms, but quite kind of miss it, it misses it. Um, and uh, they, they have failed to push forward here, especially with Magic being taken out. Ice Spy is sitting in this office, cannot really, really get it forward. Bruiser gets a long range kill, but but gets taken out by Jake. Jake with a double kill, you're taking out Red, Red Elixir as well. Now it's down to Ice Spy with the shotgun against four defenders. Uh, four defenders, sorry, that's German. Four defenders. And uh, this is not looking good for him. I mean, he has to attack a shotgun. That's a potentially one shot from a fairly long range, but Fishy, oh, Fishy misses the shot here with the mob. So on, though. Um, it seems like on this map, tower, Power Down is, is still giving the defenders good vision on certain areas. Um, so, yep, there's the kill for Gura J on Ice Spy. And that's the first game, 5-2 for status quo. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I think that round, I think, was played perfectly by the fence. Um, mm -hmm. I think their positioning was almost near perfect. Uh, there was uh, there's some, some stuff I would not... Uh, that was a little bit questionable, but honestly, like, a lot of their positioning was built around crossfires, and we saw a, a really good barbed wire placed in office that uh, mm -hmm. stopped the push. And if you noticed, um, honestly, I think Core Dynamics misused a lot of utility there. So they had some flashes go out early. I mean, it's always safe to flash uh, things like storage and uh, stuff like that. But we had some, um, you know, flashes that were used uh, by in space that was given up by the defense. Mm -hmm. But the key, the key thing that I noticed was uh, we had two players push up into office and by the time they got there and they got to that barbed wire that was uh, problematic, defense not only did they have a, a two-man crossfire on that barb, but the attack had zero utility for that. They had no flashes, they had no nade to clear the barb, they had nothing, so they were just stuck there. And we saw one de de attacker try to push through the barb and just get obliterated because there's nothing you can do. Yeah, I think, I think their plan was to smoke it off, um, and if they just fail to smoke through the window, which is kind of tricky to do, um, 
So that was a little unfortunate for them. That did not quite work out for them as their plan. I'm not sure if a smoke would have helped them that much in a position, but I think that was at least their plan. So yeah, they're running out of them running out of utilities there was a little unfortunate for sure. Yeah. Um, the problem with smokes uh, through or like even just throwing anything through the outer windows is on um, uh, is that windows if you hit the like the edges of the windows or like the the cross beams of the windows it will mm -hmm. bounce back so yeah. um at least right now with how uh grenade throwing is it can be kind of hard to get a perfect lineup th for that so it was unfortunate that that smoke missed but i do think that would have kind of helped cut off some of the angles that they were worried about yeah for sure um so yeah so status quo takes the first game here and we're gonna go in the second game very soon i assume uh that was a strong start for status quo though i think they played the whole game pretty well um very strong display here so this is this is gonna be hard for codynamics if they if they want to take this match um seems like the teams might take a short break though so we might do the same we'll see Yeah, well, what are your predictions for for the next uh, for the second game? What do you think is, is core dynamics today? Do they stand a chance? Can I come back here, or is it like just is this status quo too too strong for them for now? So based off what I was seeing, um, I think status quo. I think this matchup could be a lot more even. It's it's very mm -hmm. possible to be more even, but right now, uh, status quo is just playing smarter. Um, I, I noticed they're holding more crosses. They're um, they're kind of they're at least pushing together while while I do think both sides could uh, utilize flashbangs a little bit more. Um, I think both of them are using their uh, or like sorry, status quo is being better at pushing and getting trade frags, at least because we do see a, like, a lot of the time when a, a player from status quo is falling, we do get at least a, a kill back. If not, they're just holding uh, crosses very well. And mm -hmm. being able to honestly do retakes uh, too, like they're they're losing out positioning and they're able to take some of it back, and uh, our dynamics doesn't really uh, seem to be able to react very well to it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it seems like our dynamics is not quite ready yet. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, so in the meantime, let's do a little preview because after this match we will have another match uh, we mentioned it earlier after this match we will have red team versus flatline which is probably yeah one of the two top games this week uh the other one was yesterday with uh fluff versus uh lcg um red team and flatline both very very experienced teams um so uh what what are your predictions for later well uh i was gonna cast that game but unfortunately i had something come up sad because uh, I, I was really excited for that game but um i imagine <laughs> yeah so as uh we they're two of our competitors right now um mm. as looking as we uh won our game from this week but yeah i don't know i think flatline versus red team is going to be very interesting because two they both have very different play styles red team is um more of kind of they kind of uh they respect like they respect other teams in terms of kind of giving space and being able to I guess I guess play around more of like a strategic mindset. I feel like a lot of their um, a lot of their plays are a little, little bit more creative. While uh, we look at a team like Flatline and um, a lot of their a lot of their plays kind of build off of, around um, around their their gun skill and kind of very similar to DFC in terms of they just kind of want to go in, get stuff open, and uh, challenge angles, ch uh, take fights, and uh, take those fights together. So I'm very interested to see how those two play styles will, will clash against each other and who, what play style will um, you know, outdo the other. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds very interesting for sure. Um, so the next game has started. Uh, I, I think, ah, there we go. Now I can connect. Um, so yeah, we're going to go into game two here. Um, status quo, oops, I, okay. I guess I have to reset my game. Anyway, we're, we're going to go into game two here anyway. Uh, so status quo took the first one five to two. So pretty strong start for them. Um, we will see if they can take the second game as well or if Core Dynamics can take that back. Um, also, apparently I misspoke. I, uh, I, meant, I meant DFC versus 
uh, Fluff yesterday, not LCG versus Fluff. <laughs> so I'm sorry for that. Also, I have, to have a minor correction uh, earlier. I earlier said that LCG um, played in season in the first season or in the alpha season, and uh, that's not true. They didn't didn't exist at that point in time yet. Um, their players, however, or a bunch of their players at least, uh, did. So um, that's what I got mixed up. Gramstar was playing for pretty awful last season, so that was what was confused me there. So minor correction here, um, but it seems like we're getting into. Oops, you have been kicked from the server by Easy Anti Cheat. That's that's not good. <laughs> well, we're getting. <laughs> okay, I might have to uh, fall back to our stream fallback. Uh, production, can I get a stream, please? That would be great. Um, I'm gonna try to get in the game again. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Easy anti cheats usually like never did that to me before. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I can I can highlight some things here. So we have a factory map here. Um, this one is interesting. It has a tile that we I don't I don't think we've seen. This is one of the new tiles, uh, perch. So we have a, a staircase with um, a, almost like a balcony where we can kind of look down on the mm -hmm. generator and a little bit of the bomb. But unfortunately, there's not uh, honestly a lot of angles for it. And um, if you if you notice, you can actually see perch pretty easily from toxic. So holding toxic control is going to be very important if they plan to play any players on perch itself. Um, but it does look like the attack of core dynamics wants to go for a dock play. And yeah, look, I'm, a, I'm guessing is uh, looking for, to smoke around the, the staircase on the right there and, and go for a power play. Um, as well as, but they are very aware of perch. So I'm curious if the if status quo will abuse perch here, considering it doesn't look like the attack is wanting to go to toxic at all. Um, and the defense is kind of built up around uh, what appears to be docks as as well as uh, office. And then they do have the one mop player up on perch. Um, the next yeah. thing about office on this map is you actually have a window that looks down onto almost the entire map. So. I'm curious to see if Core Dynamics adjusts to clear these people out office because they could be very problematic. Yeah, office seems to be a very strong hole together with Perch. Uh, there's some dangerous sidelines here. Seems like Core Dynamics is pushing into dogs. It's getting pull, uh, pushed back with the Molotov though. Um, they threw the smoke, which is now kind of denied basically. Um, um, but yeah, they have to wait for the Molotov to go down. And um, now they're trying to push in again. Jake and Combs are getting a crossfire on here. Also, Investigator is getting in position. Jake is falling back after firing a few shots. Gura is also getting in position, but the takeout power. Uh, Combs is still waiting there. Um, still nobody died, apparently. Okay, now there we go. Magic down. Also, Investigator. Oh, la oh they're here. There's a lot of trades on the western part around power. Power going on and off all the time. And... Jake is being taken out after he takes out Ice Buy. Now it's down to a 2v2. Alpian Red Elixir um, versus Gura J versus Fishy. Gura goes down to Red Elixir. And now it's two versus one defender. Two attackers versus one defender. And they have the lights out advantage. Um, Red Elixir is pretty low on HP though. And Fishy is sitting in that office we mentioned earlier with an Ingmar. So that's really, really dangerous. Uh, potentially. Um, the pre-firing the bomb, I think. I guess he saw some ghost there. I don't know. Um, they don't know where Fishy is. And Fishy is waiting for his time to strike. I didn't mean I have still 35 seconds. That's a good, good amount of time left. Um, starting defuse now. Fishy is starting to take the shot. Can't, can't get the kill. He's sticking the defuse. Fishy is jumping down and up. He takes the kill. Ooh, strong first round here for Core Dynamics. Yeah, and that could have easily turned the opposite direction. I don't, uh, earlier on, we saw. Yeah, it was Tom's, very chaotic. Tom's made a huge play. If you notice, he was tucked right next to the, uh, the power. And yeah. core dynamics players actually ended up passing him. One even jumping on top of him, and uh, the comms just ended up running past him and getting two kills off of that with a shotgun. So mm. comms' disruption there could have been huge, but unfortunately we started to see other uh, defenders start to fall. Even I think uh, Jake, who who was playing in office with um, Fishy, overextending into the open and getting uh, traded out because of it. Um, and then toward mm. the end there. Um, I think the only real thing that needs to go different is kind of uh, some. We need to see some rotates. So fishy in that one v two, he was in a he was in a poor position of which where the bomb was facing. The bomb was facing the opposite direction of him, so he couldn't actually cover the defuse from the window. Yeah. So he needed to make some uh, some action there and rotate, or at least start to get some ideas of where players were, because he clearly really didn't know and was only playing off the defuse. Yep. Yep. Looked like it. It was interesting though. I think power was taken out three times, maybe two, at least two times, I'm not sure, quite sure. Uh, it was being flipped 
back on and off, off and on um, over and over again. So it was interesting. Yeah, comms there with the double kill for sure. But it, it was very chaotic because comms just came around the counter with the double kill, and at the same time his teammates were fallen, uh, we were falling down to the to the shots of the attackers. So it was a pretty chaotic push there. Um, but yeah. Um, Core Dynamics now ahead with 1 to 0, and now they're attacking again on the Seastorm map. Tight, tight. Interesting name. <laughs> um, so, what do you think about this map? Oh, it has a it has a um, thingy. What's it called? Uh, skylight. Interesting. Yeah, so. You don't get many is, of those. There's a skylight on this map, and I think, like, one, one strong play, too, is um, which defense is actually kind of pointing out is being able to actually take office and go right to power. And not only that, but you also have access to tellers, so that cuts off that player Ooh, that might yeah. be sitting in tellers and kind of playing for the info gather but um the bomb site and bathroom it's a little a little bit awkward for defenders here to kind of uh move around but um i do like this barb placement in storage it's it's going to be able to cut them off and you can even maybe play for like a wall bang from freezer if uh, you know they have the appropriate weapon but it does seem like they're playing pretty defensive with these barb they're not being as extensive with them um so they're they're kind of my guess is defense is kind of betting on the fact that they're going to, it's going to come down to uh, defending the bathroom itself. But I do like that the fact that they're uh, a little bit spread out here, starting to play some um, earlier positioning just to get some damage done, hopefully. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like Core Dynamics decided to go eco and all jump through the, through the skylight. Um, so yeah, it seems like Storefront is pretty much uncontested and it's going to work out for them quite well, I imagine. They're setting up for... Um, for jumping down. Defenders are waiting patiently. Again, core dynamics with the slow walk all the way to the entry point. They're losing a lot of time that way, but also they have to have to surprise uh, the moment of surprise here on their side. They threw one flash, got in. Uh, comms trying to get some shots through the freezer shelves um, that they fail to connect. Um, RP Magic and Relix are pushing to start with the frag grenade, taking out about wire. So Investigator and Gura had to pull back. Investigator waiting there with the auto shot gun behind the corner or right in bathroom. Taking the first kill, taking the second kill, double kill here for him with the auto shot gun. Very nice. Ice Bay was being taken out as well. And that's. Uh, oh, wow. Well, that's all attack us down. Wow. <laughs> that was quick. Yeah. Um, and actually, one thing to note is that. That, they didn't actually kill the barb there. That the nade went too deep. They oh, it used didn't? The, yeah, they used oh, the nade. Right, they used the nade <laughs> in deep storage. I'm assuming to clear mm -hmm. out the corners rather than having yeah. to flash it. But um, luckily that barb wasn't ended up being the problem. And the problem ended up being the auto shotgun in bathroom. Um, yeah. the, the I think the real the real issue there was core dynamics ended up using too much utility too early. Uh, I think one thing that uh, SQ might have noticed is that. Core Dynamics seems to do that a lot. They you know, they kind of just they play it safe and they kind of flash out uh, every single room, but they end but with that they end up flashing out too much and end up running running out of utility when it comes to the actual final push. So if you if we noticed the uh, SQ was actually playing pretty like spread out and and yeah they they forfeited storefront control, but at yep. the at the cost of uh, Core Dynamics actually using a bunch of utility there. We saw a smoke go out toward freezer. We saw some flashes go out. And by the time they actually pushed storage and were leading to bathroom, not a single flash was thrown in to disrupt that yeah. auto shoddy player or uh, whoever else was playing in bathroom with them. So yeah, very interesting point. Basically, they fall back and bait the utility and then just wait for them in the last room, and they have no flashbacks left. So yeah, they the investigator was waiting there in bathroom and did not get flashed, and therefore got the double kill very easily there, and worked out for um, status quo very well here. Yeah, if Core Dynamics is going to bounce back here, what they need to do is just kind of slow down and kind of evaluate how um, Status Quo is playing because it does seem like they're forfeiting ground. They, they're they kind of respecting uh, the, the fact that Core Dynamics kind of just pushes a lot of things, mm -hmm. especially together, and uses utility pretty early on. So it, it seems like Status Quo is kind of forfeiting a lot of the early entry, uh, or early entry rooms in order to, you know, not get uh, flashbanged and, and get you know, a, free, a free kill forfeited. Yep, for sure. We'll see how it goes this round. Um, we're on Clean Shield, Kellos map, um, with a checkpoint. That's a new tile as well. I mean, we got this last from last week, I think, new, but still, fairly new. Um, so, looks like looks like I want to do a double breach in office and club, which allows them to sandwich on kitchen, basically. Um, We'll yeah, see if that works out for them. They actually have perfect barb to read this, too. Um, there's a barb set for club with uh, two mm -hmm. players looking to hold it. 
and they have a, mm -hmm. a barb to cut off one of the um one of the ways to go through office as well as it cuts off that hallway so yep, um, yep i think point. defense is set up perfectly for this and so i'm curious if part of will be able to kind of react appropriately she's fishy is try fishing for uh for wall banks here just shooting at checkpoint but nobody's there um but yeah investigate and jake holding office with an ap and an auto shotgun so this is going to be hard to push as well again caught an with a bunch of flashbangs and frag grenades into club um comms taking the kill here when i spy rushes in uh to getting some return fire but oh gura with the other kill here that's two attackers down already and investigator with another double kill with the auto shotgun and that's again all five attackers down Wow, what a strong defense from status quo here again. But as you said, they set it up perfectly. So, play yeah, it out. It read perfectly. If we noticed, the funneling happened exactly where it, where it was meant to. Um, the, the two attackers pushed the one side without the barbed wire, and we had a we had a player uh, play close with a shotgun and ready for it. And then we had um, three players push into club. They did have a frag mm -hmm. grenade to be able to clear that barbed wire, but um, comms had a very long angle and, and nothing that really could got flash cleared or even yeah, smoked off Ingmar. so he was able to do a lot of damage and it was almost looking a little scary for uh status quo because there was a missed molly that actually um hit the, some of the players that were playing close to help support com uh, comms but luckily it recovered and they were able to peek back and and uh, get a kill off of it and yeah it was just it was just an extremely uh, well done round i think it was actually read perfectly and played perfectly yeah yeah i agree that was that worked out really really well for them um <clears throat> so yeah that's that's two double kills in a row for investigator with the auto shotgun he knows how to use that thing apparently wasn't he the one with the 4k uh in the first game yep, as well he yeah was the one he who talked on freezer yeah he seems to like that weapon quite a bit um and bring it to good use so um interesting interesting so yeah the core dynamics has to step it up again now um they're down to one after losing the first game so this is uh, they're getting in the critical area here for sure um seems like they want to do an eco play though oh uh, wait they're defending uh so squad wants to do an eco play that is through storage into office which you mentioned earlier is very important on this map yeah, yeah. i do think it, it cuts off a lot of angles that um defense can kind of play from um mm -hmm. but but like we kind of noticed toward the end of the on um, the first round is that it still does not see bomb so it's while it is a strong place to hold it's not um it's not going to save you around so, yeah, yeah it sees bomb but it sees the wrong side of bomb basically yes. we, we saw that earlier where they just stick to defuse and uh fishy couldn't get the kill there and had to jump down and was then taken out so yeah good point um but yeah, for the attackers, this is obviously a very strong point to hold, right? Because they don't have to hold the bomb. Uh, but they have to hold the bomb, but they don't have to kill the defuser because that's going to be their teammate. Um, so I guess office is more important for the attackers than for the defenders on this map, actually. Yeah, and Core Dynamics is kind of reading into that. They ended up using a barb for office to mm -hmm. prevent that push into the window room. And they actually do have a barb set up for the, the same play they did. They're trying to counteract a power play here. With two mollies actually set up ready for generator to deny a docks play oh yeah they're waiting for the docks play but dunston seem like there's gonna be one comes as what is he doing he's throwing flashbangs mm. down the closed dock door what was that I, th I think he hoped for a defender to open the thing maybe i think maybe he's just trying to make some sound weird to waste yeah. a flashbang for it but um yeah for it, sure do you see everyone slow walking for green door here mm-hmm also, it seems like they're not stacked up on equipment. Jake doesn't bring anything. Fishy and Gura also both only on one flashbang. Um, they don't bring much utility for this round. So they're taking it slow. They're, this is like really, really eco, basically. And now the double flash storage. That's three flashbangs down already. But magic goes down to Gura J here. And uh, now Comps is pushing into office while Ice by is sitting with the with the shotgun. Uh, they're flashing into office. I don't think they saw him yet. He's, uh, that was a shot, but miss. Um, Red Exit takes out Gura J on the other side of the map, though. Uh, I suppose still holding this office against two attackers. Uh, I think he's... Yeah, they're, they're pulling out. Jake... Oh, that's three attackers down there now. Um, Jake was picked up um uh, by breeze in the northern part here ice by still holding that office <laughs> comes comes getting the long range kill and freeze on perch though and taking out ice spy as well and actually bring it down to a 2-2 uh, fishy here oh with the shotgun couldn't quite take generator it's been taken out and now it's down to comes with the ap versus two defenders both 
a little bit lit already. Well, one of them is really low. Um, and there, well, he takes out LP, and now it's down to Red Elixir to stop him. And Red Elixir has basically no HP left. Comms is on half HP as well, though. Well, not quite, a little bit but over half HP, I guess. Uh, he just swapped his weapon uh, for for an F1 Legros. I assume he ran out of bullets. It's now on the bomb. Red Elixir has pushed him. He's just staking it. That's 50% already. Takes the shot here. <laughs> the perfect time and takes the Red Elixir. What a comeback. Quattro kill for Comms GG. Wait, what? Was he out of time? Wow. Uh, Was he out of time? I didn't notice. It looks like that's the case. That's really unfortunate, <laughs> too. Because, oh no! Uh, that was that was an incredible turnaround. Um, yes. The, the defense was in such a strong position. They they counter. Um, you know they while they did lose a player uh, in storage, they used up a lot of the attacks utility. And if we notice, mm -hmm. you know, I Spy was able to hold office for a long time because yeah. he had a barb wire and uh, two attackers on his barb with no flashbangs. So he was able yep. to sit in there for with full safety. But he uh, um. We ended up seeing some mistakes get made from the, the defense. They got a bit too aggressive. We saw iSpy actually try to push out of the office after uh, a player from Toxic got a kill onto a player from Perch. And so mm -hmm. he ended up uh, forfeiting his life. And so numbers started to balance out when uh, defense started to get a bit too um, uh, aggressive and antsy and kind of started to lose lives there. Uh, but luckily it worked out. They still stalled enough time to be able to um, not allow the attackers to defuse. And uh, a very, very close round. I mean, you could say they lost, the status quo lost this round because they slow walked to the entry point, basically. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if they would have rushed for, uh, faster, the defenders would have been maybe a little bit more prepared. Who knows? But um, yeah, they're, they're, I didn't really didn't watch the timer, apparently. Um, I think that that, that explains why. Too. They were going wide, that, if you noticed. Yeah, they, they did go pretty wide. Um, that's, that explains why comms was just sticking the diffuse there because he was running out of time there. Um, but it was, I think it was a really nice pick for him. Like he, he sticked to the diffuse and like stopped like for half a second to take out the last defender uh, when he came around the corner and then continued diffusing and was just not quite, not quite enough. Um, so that was really well played from comms GG here, but it was not, not enough. So we're 2-2 two -two now. So everything is up in the air again. Um, we're back to the to the C store this time with a status quo on the attack. Seems like they also want to go through um, through the through the skylight, um, which means they didn't use any charges first round, right? So will they not use any now either? That that would leave them with three charges for the third round. That would be pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm in a circling the red dawn office now, so maybe. Yeah. Let's take a look. Doesn't they don't have a charge yet? No, they don't. Well, they're still in the truck. Maybe. I think they're still debating. Nope. Comms is going out without any utility. There's no no charge at all. So they're echoing it again. Yep. Risky. Um. Interesting. Fishy is for some reason in chat. I'm not sure what. I guess just making noise. All defenders are basically on the western part of the map. They're Reddit, Luxie, and Arcade. All the others are in freezer and bathroom. So Fishy, uh, no, they're all on all, all the roof now. Um, actually, Gura is in already, taking some shots at Ice Spy, who sits in freezer. They're pushed into storage, um, which is completely undefended. But there's a barbed wire now, and they have a frag grenade. Uh, there's, it's, it's, it's chucked in now, though. I don't think it's going for the barbed wire. Um, double kill for the attackers here, taking out RP, and at the same time, Ice Spy is going down at the north. Well, not really double kill, but, but that. That's three attackers down. That was really quick. Magic with a double kill here um, in bathroom, taking out Infiscator. But it's now being killed by Comps GG. Um, and Gura J is pushing in from the north as well. Red Elixir is completely out of position, has to rotate. Now Breeze is still sitting in the stall, waiting for his time to strike, while Red Elixir is coming close from the north with a knack attack. So they kind of. Oh, wall bank! <laughs> Comps is just wall banging the stalls. Breeze is coming out now, shooting them. <laughs> this is interesting. He's actually not coming out. They're just shooting blindly at each other. Breeze is going down, finally. And now it's down to Red Elixir, who still did not go in through the north. Now catching comms off guard, taking him out with the knack attack here. Gura on the bomb, is sticking the fuse. Red Elixir is rushing in, and it's been taken out by Gura J. And the round goes to status quo. That was close as freak, though. This time was enough time on the clock, though. <laughs> wow. Ooh, that Very was crazy. Close round. Um, yes. I One thing... I, I, yeah, wow, I'm just a little shocked. So, honestly, <laughs> honestly, Core Dynamics is actually playing that um, surprisingly well, at least, or like really well with how um, Status Quo was was playing against it. We noticed, um, saw some players come into Sorge, and uh, we actually saw the, the frag go out into bathroom rather than clearing the barb. 
And yeah. it, I, I saw that a little bit surprising because while, yes, Cornelius was stacked inside of Bathroom and they had the potential to, you know, maybe get all three players, um, clearing that barb is a lot more important, especially when um, uh, Status Quo didn't have any flashbangs to entry into Bathroom. So funneling through that one door with that barbed wire against a bunch of um, uh, at least a shotgun player, and I think I think we had like a, a Gruber and maybe like an AK sitting all in bathroom, just staring at that one doorway. Uh, not the greatest move, but it was re it was recovered by um, some some nice gunfights. Status Quo was able to uh, take, and then Core Dynamics just making some uh, poor poor judgments of of gunfights to take. Yeah, for sure. Um... That was that was really interesting. Out, I liked the the bathroom stall wall banging action going yeah, on. That was that was a little was... chaotic. <laughs> if only uh... if, if that point, if only he got a kill there too, then I think that round oh. sways differently. But yeah, yeah. it was yeah, it was, it was a, a little unfortunate. Mess. It was a little unfortunate timing as well because the other defender uh, with the nag was just coming in from the north and did not quite get through the door when they started attacking um, the stalls. I think Combs just picked up the auto shotgun and started shooting through the stall um, w uh, walls. So a um, little unfortunate timing for them there. And then the other defender decided to not go through the northern door and rotate around. And, I mean, he got Combs off guard, catched off, uh, um, he caught Combs off guard, so he got the kill there, but was not enough to take out the last attacker there. And so the round did go to status quo, which means they're ahead three to two now. And they're on their last attack round for they this have game. All the charges potentially for this match. They're doing, I, I think, what <laughs> is... they have all the charges, right? Yeah, yeah they, have they have all two, the charges. Two clackers. And they're doing honestly a very readable play. It, and it looks like uh, the defense is ready for it. It seems mm -hmm. like that um, they want to just wall charge straight from green door into kitchen. Um, I think it's probably the oh, most yeah. obvious wall charge there is, and it looks like sure. uh, Core Dynamics is ready for it. But they're also ready for the club play. They have uh, and for, set office. Up for office club. The barb set up everything um, just in case, but uh, let's see how Status Quo is able to deal with this prediction. Yeah, Club is being breached already. Ice Boy shot out. Did not connect though. Took a little bit of damage. Um, he was sitting there with the shotgun. He's now giving up the position though. He doesn't want to get wall banged. Breeze is rotating into checkpoint, trying to get a kill here. Has to pull back after taking lots of damage. Um, getting on the window now though. Uh, together with the RP. RP is being taken up by the auto shotgun. And Breeze could not revenge kill here from the window, unfortunately. Now they're smoking um, so checkpoint and trying to get the wall bang off. The wall shot off. It goes off. Gura, the rush is in. Magic is there with the with the knack, but cannot connect yet. It's been taken out by the auto, uh, by the auto shotgun. And while two attackers uh, died in club, um, Jake is gonna, just going to stick that defuse. Red X is rushing in, but it's been taken out by Jake. And Ice Boy is getting a kill here, but the defuse is just going to go through. And well, all defenders are dead as well. So <laughs> GG four to two. Oh wow, that was interesting. That worked out quite well for status quo actually. Yeah, I mean, well, they honestly had a pretty good pinch. So while they mm -hmm. did end up sending. Um... What is it? Two, maybe three players into three club, club. I think. Yeah. Um, that their their true intention there was just to cause a distraction because the, the yeah. main play was coming from that um, that auto shoddy and that wall charge coming in through the lobby, and that's what ended up doing it. We we saw a smoke come out, and they were able to just kind of run through the smoke and not have to worry about um, any cross angles from either side of the hallway, and able to disrupt. Um, and because of they had the shotgun coming out of that smoke in in a close quarters area, isn't too much of a problem. Yeah. Um, and they were able to just run through and clear the site. The weird thing that I saw from Core Dynamics is they chose to give up uh, to give up office, and so they didn't. And they ended up not having a cross, and so that's why mm -hmm. the club play worked so well because they were able to uh, disrupt those players on the club side, so they couldn't mm -hmm. they couldn't push from uh, the club side in the kitchen. And then the players from office ended up rotating off entirely. So uh, being able to get that wall charge right in the site, all the all they had to do was worry about the the, the one player that was on site itself. Yep. Yep. And as you mentioned, they had the auto shotgun from last round, so that was not too too bad. So the attackers who did go through club died eventually, but they did their job. They distracted defenders long enough for the other attacker team to just go through with the wall charge, and um, that worked quite well for them. So uh, this is actually match point now, potentially. If status quo wins this, they take uh, this match 2-0. Two, two um, so it's looking good for them. We need like three perfect rounds from Core Dynamics now to to go to uh, game three. Um, so we'll see if they manage to pull that off. We're back to Omega Hickory, the, the factory map in this rotation. Um, we'll see what they do. It seems like a dog play again. 
Seems like they cannot quite decide on which dock to blow, though. Yeah, so these teams love dock boys. <laughs> apparently, apparently. Uh, there's a lot of drawing going on. So that's not very helpful because it's lagging at my computer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, defenders are spawning in. in. Seems like they have two people in office storage area and three people around generator. Well, two on generator, one on perch. No, comms is maybe rotating. Do they, they bring the mob, Gura J with the mob? on generator holding dock basically so that might work out quite well for them jake an investigator sitting in office storage will probably not do much but they can rotate from there um seems like they decided on dock one uh, four rather uh flashbang going off outside again what's <laughs> what's up with that um so dock is breached oh long range kill here from alpi on generator taking out comms was sitting on generator very nice here with the black tar um ice Spy actually has a saber so he can hold some long angles as well he's smoking off to get in um seems like fishy is shooting the long range he has a very very tight angle through between the smoke and the, the crates there but they can push through um taking generator probably taking power now uh fishy has to pull back is trying to crawl onto generator rather actually um power is down fish is going down um uh, but not after after taking just after taking LP, Gurujay is being picked off as well by Breeze here though, and now it's down to Jake and Mister gets to hold this. Jake taking out Breeze, but it's still three attackers, and they have uh, power is down and they take control of the of the generator side now. Well, so much for that. Investigator taking taking out magic and red elixir here. Double kill for him. Very, very well played with the uh, KR here. Taking the double kill. And now it's down to Ice Bay, who has the saber and it's dark. And there's still a flashbang. He can do this. Both defenders are super low. So he might be worthwhile to switch out to a weapon that has a higher rate of fire uh, if he can find one. But he also has to get moving as 40 seconds that's not super short but it's not that much time left either so we'll see if he can capitalize on that he's starting the fuse for half a second there just to bait them anti taking a shot uh, but failing to connect he's trying to take a jack but misses uh throws a flashbang and rushes jake we'll see if that works out for him it does jake going down but 19 seconds oh uh, he's looking for the window he's going for the bomb and we Yep, that, he's taken out. I was about to say he cannot be shot from my winner, but he can. And that's four, 5 to 2 for Status Quo here, taking the second game as well. So they're taking the match 2 to 0 versus uh, Codonamics. GG. Wow. What a good, what a good round to end it on. Uh, Codonamics yep. actually played that really well. We saw a great opening pick on the start. Um, mm -hmm. As soon as they open the wall, rather than um, what I've seen actually a lot, surprisingly, a lot of teams do is rather than just kind of like smoking off instantly, they decided to like, you know, check the angles, see if anyone was peeking and punish them for it. And they got a perfect mm -hmm. opening kill. And then that's when they decided to smoke and pu start pushing through and going for power. So they were actually playing it really well. They were they were holding some angles. They were waiting for defenders to peek and, and getting some kills off of it. But then things just started to dissolve. Uh, defenders started to get some kills back and, and started to even the man count and then leading it to a 2v1. Yeah, yeah, and in the end, it worked out for uh, status quo because investigator got a three k here, and um, so that was yeah. I, I for a second I thought I spy got, get, um, got this because he 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 uh, got Jake there with a the flashbang and rushed him and took him out, and then was he? I think he was about to get behind the bomb, and then investigator got the shot there last second basically before he could hide behind the bomb. Because if he would have gotten there, he would have been in cover, um, and investigator would have been. The one to ha who has to move, um, and he was very low on HP. So, I think if if Ice Spy would have made it behind the bomb, that could have worked. Uh, that would have worked out for him. But unfortunately for him, not quite. So yeah, status quo takes this, um, which means we're done for now, but not for today. We're gonna take um, a, a little bit longer of a break. I don't think we're gonna take down the stream though. So feel free to stick around. Um, we have an interview. We could do an interview. That's actually a good idea <laughs> if we if we get interview guests here. Um, but yeah, we, um, so while we're trying to get an, an interview here, um, we're going to have another match in like around 35 to 40 minutes, which, as we mentioned earlier, is Red Team versus Flatline, which is going to be super, super interesting. Um, that's not going to be casted by us, though. We're going to have Svarbeck uh, together with our new caster, Addix, I think. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Svan addicts are going to take that one. Um, so definitely stick around for that. That's going to be very, very cool. And also, while we're at it, uh, the last match of the week will be played tomorrow. Darklight Studios 
versus the Reds at 5.30 p.m. Um, EST. And that's going to be casted by Biako and me. So that's going to be fun as well. So please come watch. And um, I think we have comms here. So hi, comms. GG. Uh, what's up, man? How do you feel? I feel great. We feel great, man. It's, we're really excited that we went up 2-0. Yeah, good job. Um, I'll kind of lead off with some questions here. So yeah, please uh, do. I, I would like to talk. Let's first talk about game one. Um, I want to talk about round two. Um, I think one of the, the biggest play that came out of that round, and I think um, I, if at least if I was core dynamics would have uh, shook me a bit, is we had uh, investigator hiding inside of freezer. I, at least I'm, I'm assuming he was uh, tucking himself in freezer behind the sandbags with the auto shoddy. And four players pushed through Freezer, uh, going past him and not checking the corner, and he was able to punish them with uh, with a 4K. Was um, was that intentional? Like, was was uh, Investigator trying to like hide there and, and go for that type of play? He was, but he was a bit too late. So they opened the door. I was shooting at them, and I had to scream at him to come out <laughs> now and shoot them with their backs. <laughs> I mean, I think it was perfect though. Like, yeah, you guys, you guys had the lineups. Like, you were playing in arcade and um, were able to distract them to think that no one was there because, unfortunately, they d decided to not check that corner, and he was able to punish it perfectly. Um, one thing also too on on round four of game one, we I think it was the it was one of the factory maps. Um, there was a a smoke on on docks, so it was a it was a a push from you guys where you were pushing through docks and. I think the intention was to smoke deeper, but the smoke actually ended up landing short by the uh, by the staircase, and you guys still tried to push through anyway. But unfortunately, you know, lost players via that push. Was the was the the close smoke intentional or was it accidental? It was purely accidental. We wanted to smoke off that lower right docks and then go through office, but it just didn't go the way we intended. We still tried though. Yeah, uh, it. It's a little bit tough to deal with that. Um, you know, one thing one thing that it can be done though is just kind of just wait for the smoke to fade out and uh, try to hope for it afterward. But um, yeah, I, I assumed that the, that wasn't an intentional smoke, but I just wanted to kind of clarify. Um, and then on to game two, um, one round I liked on round three was uh, you guys actually ended up perfectly reading them on on the kill house. Uh, you guys had a barb set up for club with uh, two players playing in it. Uh, you yourself, comms, were holding the long angle with Ingmar, and you had uh, another barb set up for office. And um, on one of the the one of the two ways that could have came in from via red door, and also to watch the hallway. Uh, did you was that kind of like an intentional read that you thought they were going to go both red doors? Um, and like your position, because your positioning was also built ex uh, perfectly around that too. So can you kind of walk me through a little bit of that round? Yeah, so after, I think it was factory, after that factory, we were like, okay, they have boat charges and there's no way they're going to go green because boat doors are really good positions to have. So I was set up to molly it and like I see, like you seen, I didn't know that garage was actually going to play that close, but it did go perfectly. We were in the exact positions that we needed to be. And you know, we just played good. Yeah, I noticed the uh, unfortunate missed Molly and it tagged Garage as he tried to run away. But uh, yeah, it was it was a really good round um, and uh, executed perfectly, I think. And then uh, the kind of last round I want to talk about is uh, actually on the same the same clubhouse, the same uh, killhouse map, and it was except you guys were on attack, and so uh, I believe you chose to bring or not use any charges on the previous two rounds so you ended up being able to come in with a triple charge but only end up using two um so you guys ended up deciding going i think it was three or uh, players club and two people lobby including the auto shoddy um can you kind of talk us about uh, talk to us about that round because i think you guys executed that pretty perfectly all right so that one i wouldn't say it was a mistake but it's more of we decided to go green the boat previous rounds when we realized oh we had all the charges <laughs> so the part, like <laughs> the first thing we seen was that checkpoint into the wall charge into the kitchen and then we were like well we might as well bring the other two charges it, it worked really well though and you know. yeah the way i mean the way that we saw it was um 
you know, sending those players through club was able to actually pull some rotates from the defense. And so they were pretty worried about you. And while, while um, you know, those players in club did die, the, the, the players that brought wall charge directly into green door, or into sight from green door, uh, did everything else perfectly because those rotates happened to pull off from office as well. And you guys were able to just clear sight with auto shotgun very easily. And their only other rotate was from club which you guys already knew by you know sending some players through so i mean yeah that's that, those are all the rounds that i wanted to kind of address i think um both teams played uh well both teams obviously have things to improve as well but um i think you guys did really well with um uh, teamwork today compared to core dynamics and it, and it showed thank you yeah speaking of like you're you're a brand new team, and uh, you just start the season really strong with two wins, basically right off the bat. Um, so, how do you feel about that? How's your team like coming together? Tell us a bit about your team. Oh my God, we were screaming so hard <laughs> when we won that game. Because like <laughs> we were even discussing it earlier. It's like okay, we got to go two zero, or else we might have to go up against DFC. So if we don't, we're pretty much in a bad situation. But um, I just feel like we're happy because, you know, we always knew that we were capable. We knew that we mm -hmm. could get top six at least. But, you know, we just, we just have to put that into effect. Yeah, we will see who you're going to face next week. It's going to be someone else who did go 2-0. So expect a tough challenger. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're basically in the, well, I guess in the top three now for next week. Um, so I, I, I guess that opens the possibility you might go get against someone who has one one. Actually, we will see. Um, but yeah, we will. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to more uh, of your team um, throughout the coming season, and uh, we'll see where you end up at the in the, in the end. Um, very strong start for sure. So congratulations for putting the team together, and Thank seems you. like you seems like you uh, trained hard, and uh, it's it paid off so far. So cool, cool. Yeah. Um, Thanks for being around. And um, yeah, I think at this point we're going to take, as I mentioned, a lengthy break uh, for like 30, 25 to 30 minutes. Um, and we get the the third match for today, uh, Red Team versus Flatline. And um, so yeah, that will be casted by, by Sfa and uh, edX. So um, yeah, as I said earlier, one more one more time, the, the last plug. Tomorrow, 5.30 p.m. EST, Darklight Studios versus the Reds with Biako and me. So please come around. But um, yeah, don't go anywhere in a half an hour or so. The next match and like a very, very important match of this week, Red Team versus Flatland, is going to happen. So but yeah, for me and for Billboard, it's time to say goodbye. So um, thanks for sticking around. And uh, thank for everyone, thanks to everyone for uh, for playing, for viewing, for helping make this happen. And um, yeah. That's that's it for me. Any last words? Billboard comes. Uh, just thanks for having me, and good luck to the rest of the teams this week. Sure. Yep. Good. Uh, it's an enjoyable first cast. I uh, hope to come back for the future weeks, and um, yeah, I'm excited for the rest of these weeks' matches, and uh, good luck to the rest of the teams this week. For sure. Cool. Okay. So that's about it. Um, I'm Th Pine. Uh, with me was Billboard. And uh, don't go anywhere. We'll go, the the Ad AdX and Spa will welcome you back in, in 25 to 30 minutes. So see you then. Bye-bye. in my head filling my mind with these images yeah. and it's the way that you look at me makes me feel like I can't breathe it ain't right